the parasite extends the life of ants three times. Parasitic infections can extend the life of worker ants. Scientists have shown that tapeworm-infected ants live much longer than other workers in the same colony. Moreover, carriers of the parasite do not work and are cared for by uninfected companions. It's not clear how the parasite prolongs the life of the host, but the cocktail of proteins it releases may provide some clues. A parasitic infection is not a desirable condition. However, it turns out that this is not always the case. Studies have revealed a significantly longer lifespan for tapeworm-infected Temnothorax nylandary workers compared to their uninfected companions. Parasite carriers can live up to three times longer than their friends. Moreover, uninfected ants perform the duties of an infected worker. This parasite is the tapeworm Anomotinia brevis, whose main hosts are woodpeckers. Ants sometimes collect woodpecker droppings and carry them to the nest to feed the larvae. This is how infection occurs, of course. If there are tapeworm eggs in the feces, a team of scientists led by entomologist Suzanne Foitzik from Johannes Gutenberg University has found the answer to the idyllic life of female carriers of parasitic infection. The study has been published on the BioRxiv preprint server and has not yet gone through the peer review process. When the tapeworm settles in the ant's intestine, it pumps antioxidants and other proteins into the creature's bloodstream. It is still not clear what effect these substances produced by the tapeworm have on health. But scientists believe that they help the ants stay fit and prevent them from aging. In the life cycle of the tapeworm Anomotinia brevis, the ant is not its ultimate goal. It needs a woodpecker to breed. The parasite thus has a vested interest in maintaining its temporary ant host. This allows the bird to move. The parasite is not interested in the ant colony but waits for the woodpecker to come and infect it. In an earlier study from 2021, a team of researchers in Germany found that Temnothorax nylandary ants infected with tapeworms worked less. The other workers in the colony had to pay for the laziness of their fellow workers. Worker bees caring for infected individuals died much faster. The sick ants and their caretakers showed no physiological signs of stress. Still, the worker women gave them more care. Because the infected ants looked young. Scientists wondered what might be helping them live longer. In their new study, which has not yet been peer-reviewed, the researchers compared infected and uninfected ants. This time looking at protein levels in the ant's hemolymph, the invertebrate equivalent of the bloodstream. They found that the proteins produced by the tapeworm accounted for a significant proportion of the proteins present in the hemolymph of the test subjects. The two most abundant were antioxidants. Scientists do not know why some substances have a positive effect on the organisms of ants. One of the proteins, called vitelligenin like A, is abundant in infected individuals, but is not produced by the parasite, but by the ant itself. It is known to affect division of labor and reproduction in ant communities. Scientists emphasize that the described substances affect ants and other invertebrates. However, proving that the parasite manipulates the ant's body is extremely difficult. A team in Germany plans to continue research into the proteins produced by the parasite. Scientists hope to better understand the behavior, appearance and longevity of ants. A mind-controlled exoskeleton allows a paralyzed person to walk. 
thanks to a brain-controlled exoskeleton. A Frenchman who had been paralyzed for four years got back on his feet again. Weighing over 60 kilograms, the exoskeleton gives hope to paralyzed people to regain mobility. Thibaut, 28, lost the use of his limbs after falling from a great height. After many months of training and the work of French scientists, he was able to get back on his feet. He was helped in this by an exoskeleton and sensors implanted in the brain, thanks to which the man could control the device. The scientists behind the device say that while it has the potential to improve patients' quality of life and autonomy, it will be years before an exoskeleton is commercially available. There are still many improvements and slimming down of the exoskeleton to make it weigh less. Spinal cord injury in the cervical region in about 20% of cases. Cases end with tetraplegia, i.e. quadriplegia. This is the most severe injury of its kind. The brain is still able to generate commands that would normally move the arms and legs, but there's simply no need to execute them, said Alam Louis Benabid of the Université Grenoble Alps. Lead author of the study published in The Lancet Neurology. A team of experts from the hospital in Grenoble Alps. The biomedical company Clinatech and the research center CEA qualified Thibaut. The man did not want to reveal his name for the experimental program. Two electrodes were implanted in the Frenchman. But unlike other operations of this type, the sensors were placed not directly in the brain, but on the outermost membrane that protects the brain, the so-called dura mater. Researchers also scanned Thibaut's brain to map during exercise which areas become active when he thinks about walking or moving his arms. The exercises involved controlling characters in video games using signals sent from the brain. Only after Thibaut had achieved satisfactory results was he allowed to switch to the exoskeleton. Implants implanted between the brain and the skin of the skull contain 64 electrodes. They are placed on either side of the Frenchman's head to pick up signals from the motor cortex. The implants wirelessly communicate with the computer. The artificial intelligence algorithms used in the device, over two years of training in video games, learned to recognize the signals sent by the 28-year-old's brain when he tried to move the avatar. Each decoder transmits brain signals, which are then processed by an algorithm into the movements the patient was thinking about. It is this system that sends the physical commands that the exoskeleton performs. The 28-year-old, strapped to the exoskeleton, was clumsy at first. But over time he learned to walk and walked 10 meters and performed a series of complex hand movements using a futuristic machine for a video of the progress of the work. I felt like I was the first man on the moon, said Thibaut. I haven't moved for two years and I've forgotten what it's like to stand, he added. Until now, much of the research on improving the mobility of paralyzed people has focused on electrically stimulating muscles using machine brain interfaces. The exoskeleton, however, takes a completely different approach, bypassing the body entirely. During his walking trials, Thibaut, who spent two years in the hospital, was able to activate the machine with his brain seven times out of ten. He did 70% of the tests. Instructions given to him by the researchers. As he admitted, the greatest difficulty was for him to control the movements of the wrists, due to the greater dexterity required. For safety, the exoskeleton was strapped to the ceiling. But scientists are working on a machine that will balance itself. We need more computing power. If the patient could count on the stabilization of the exoskeleton, walking would be much easier. Benabid said, Tebow implants still work 27 months after implantation.
The researchers now want to invite three more people to join the program.